I'm going to start by introducing our first panelist, which will give us a keynote, 20 minutes keynote, and, and, ex and explain a few things. Please welcome Luca De Giglio. Luca si presenterà, si presenterà da solo. So I'm going to do this in English. I'm and uh, I've been into the RDB space since long before RDB, since 2001. And uh, I've seen how this industry grew and became something a bit bigger now. And I've been to many exhibitions like this and I never found anything about vacation rentals. It was always about hotels, ETB in Berlin, BIT in Milan, TTG in Rimini. So finally we start talking about this market. So while we fixed that, before that I was working in hotels and receptions in France, Germany, and Spain, so I have a bit of experience. Alright, so then I've been a, an expert manager, so I traveled in hotels. I've seen it from the other side of the reception. And then when I quit my job, I, I went to travel for a year, and then when I came back to Italy, I didn't want to go back to an office. It was 2000 and I was trying to do something online and I remember that when you go to Prague in the station, people will come and offer you an apartment. So I built a small Airbnb before Airbnb, very small, very ugly, but it worked and we traveled for many years. So I became, uh, without even knowing what it was, a digital nomad. So digital nomads are people who travel with a laptop and they work online. The world actually came to exist many years later, but I was basically a digital novel, I still am, right? I haven't been working in an office for more than 10 years. And then from 2001 to 2009, my life was very happy. So I was in Bali, I was in Australia, I was in Brazil. And then Silicon Valley woke up to this opportunity. So I was able to manage an online apartment rental with my laptop for very limited time and zero money and never got investors. And then Airbnb came in and completely destroyed my business. So I had to look for money. I found money, money in Bulgaria and Accelerator. We opened a very boring, I was to say, uh, online distribution business. to give us our, our apartments, we put them in Airbnb, we put them in bookings. And well, we, we kept bringing a bit of money in it, but it was really, really boring. And I was ready for something new. And uh, in the meantime, I started as training business, I was teaching people to do vacation rentals, and then the blockchain happened, and the blockchain opened my eyes, because now we can do an OTA alternative, we can do Airbnb on the blockchain, and do something which is different than Airbnb, but belongs to the network. So, as I said, I lived through this very small team, vacation rentals, or, you know, nobody even talks about them at exhibitions to today, and where these exhibitions and hotels have to come to terms with the fact that this market now is really huge. It's getting bigger by the day, right? So I think it's time now to consider this market as something where we can learn a little bit from. Booking.com already understood that, you know. When you think about these OTAs, they have a lot of data, they understand things better than any human being understand, they have artificial intelligence and they understood that you need to have apartments and other accommodations in your offering. Here you have a search in Rome, okay, this is 3,000 almost apartments and 789 hotels. Of course, hotels have more rooms, apartments have maybe two or three sleeping places, so we may be like at the same level. In terms of turnover, I guess hotels are still bigger. Okay? But you have to see the trends, and in this era, trends are exponential. We may find ourselves five years from now here where hotels are just a niche. Maybe, I'm not saying that, but we have to consider this possibility. Right? And now it's probably time, it's 2018, Airbnb is 10 years old. Maybe it's the time to look at this as an opportunity, not more as a threat. And I've gone through all the difficulties of a property manager and I've seen how property managers are still today struggling to give a good service. Today it's still better to go in a hotel than a vacation rental because of vacation rentals there's always problems, still today, okay? So you have actually, as of two years, very big opportunities still today. So let's see that. 
is you become a property manager. If you have a hotel and you decide to manage apartments around your hotel, you have incredible advantages. Okay? First, you have experience. People in Airbnb are beginners. Costs in Airbnb, the level of cost serving is incredibly low. All right? And property managers are maybe five years old in the business, is still learning. You are, you've been in this market for 30 years. I, I, I mean, Venice, right? So I've seen so many times they passed in front of a hotel in Venice and said, look at these guys. They could be making hundreds of hotels very easily. And they left this market in the hands of people that have not even the entrepreneurial mindset, right? You have the basic, basic infrastructure in place. I will go with this deeper a bit later. You have access to investments. Nobody will give money to an Airbnb host. Nobody will give money to property managers. These are young people who just start the business, right? You are a hotel. If you go there, you, will, you know, you have 30 years of experience. You have access to investment. And you have credibility. So let's go through every single step where you have advantages. First of all, if you want to get properties, when you are going to get apartments like in Venice, in Rome, in Milan, in Paris, you can get apartments so much easily compared to the new guy who comes to you and says, I'm an expert in Airbnb, I'm going to get your apartment. This guy is nobody. You are the hotel down the street. Um, I don't have this idea. I'm just thinking, right? They told me, come to speak about Airbnb opportunities and it seems to me this is an opportunity. So what I'm thinking is like you have a hotel and you go to get all the apartments around your hotel. There's a logistic problem which you have solved. Then you know how to manage booking of club, you know how to manage Expedia, you know how to manage channel manager. Every host, every host has no idea what the channel manager is. They're learning it out. You have to teach them. It's a channel manager. I mean Airbnb only. Well good luck with that, right? Or, I mean, just to the calm, or if it's not working, well, good luck with that. You, know? you get a few bad reviews, you're out. PMS, forget it, they have no idea what it is. Check in. There is a company here, it's called uh, Keezy. They are selling, they have this automatic key distributors in, this, in the railway station where I rent a vacation rental, I put my code, I get my key, and go to the apartment. You have this already, they are receptions. You have people there, most of the time, 24 hours a day. You don't need that, right? Oh, I'm sorry, and the luggage. You know, the guests have been, can I need my luggage? No, I got somebody checking in. Oh, I'm coming earlier. Can I need luggage? No, I don't. You know, the apartment is busy. You can do that, very easily. Now, people come in the apartment, something gets broken, something always gets broken. The light, you know, need to be a very low power. You turn on the washing machine, the dishwasher, and boom, it goes. And the host goes from maybe another city or half an hour away to put up the, the electricity. You have people that staff in the maintenance business, in the maintenance sector, they can go. If the apartments are closed, and again, that's why it's important to choose apartments closed, you have a done deal, very easy. Same for maintenance, you know? Oh, the heater is broken. Who are going to call? We're going to call the friend of the friend or whatever. The guy's going to come in three days, etc., etc. You have maintenance staff that can fix a hotel, that can fix an apartment. Of course, it's not as easy as it looks. Every apartment is different, but still, these are people you are paying, they are in your hotel, they have experience. So it's much easier for you to do that than for somebody who's just invented this job, right? And okay, bureaucracy. Now, Italy is the country of bureaucracy. Our politicians are just not able to do any easy way to make, to regulate the uh, space, and that's actually the reason why I've been being so strong in it, because you cannot rent an apartment for long term, otherwise people get in, stop paying your rent, and you have them in your apartment for three years, and you have to pay bills for them. This is the reason Airbnb is strong in it. So, don't fight Airbnb, fight the politicians. They should just fix the normal rental environment. But I have no hope in that. Um, then you have the contacts, you have your tax, tax people, you have your, you know, the, whatever, all these people that we pay for papers, right? And they don't have them, they have to look for them, they go to their taxman, and he doesn't know anything about Airbnb, so it's, it's basically a mess. You start again, also in this, from a better position. Cleaning. Cleaning is the unsolved problem of property managers. So, if you ever go in an Airbnb, 
Choose an Airbnb where the host has maximum 10 apartments. Over 10 apartments, property managers send people to clean and they can't clean properly because they have to do it quickly, they are not trained, different people go into the same apartment, and every apartment is like a different hotel. You know, so I was right now in call in a vacation rental summit and the problem of cleaning was openly unsolved. I work with people in Venice who send their you know, hotels, who send their cleaners there, they are professional, they are paid, they are they're not even you know, illegally paid, they are paid properly and they know how to work. They just have to learn how to fix to clean this apartment and it's gonna be perfect, right? And laundry is the worst thing. Because if you have few apartments, there's no company who will take your laundry, clean it for you and give it back, or rent it as a customer. You need a lot of critical mass. This is very hard to get, right? So you have your laundry sold already, then you have another problem sold. Now, that was one opportunity. Become a property manager. Okay? Become a property manager, try at least, see if this is an opportunity for you. Then you have another opportunity. Airbnb has done all the sharing economy talk, but it's completely given up on it. It was a very great marketing talk to say we are sharing economy, peace and love, let's make the world a better place. Now they have hotels, so everybody is just another OTA. They are accepting some kind of hotels. Two hotels specific, you know, Yoki, Japan and all these very localized kind of hotels, but the next step is probably every kind of hotel. They are after the money. They are investor based, right? So I'm pretty sure in five to ten years, every single hotel could be an Airbnb. Now, that's another opportunity, opportunity number three. I told you I was a digital nomad. This is becoming a mass phenomenon. People who work with a laptop and travel the world. This is one. Remote workers, people working in an office, and the office company says, okay, you go for work from, from home now. I'm not going to check what you do anymore, I'm going to look at the results. There are companies emptying, you have to imagine, offices getting empty. Thousands of people getting out of the office but keeping the salary. So what they do, they go home. They go to work from home, and then they realize that somebody disturbs them. Maybe the kids disturb them, maybe the husband or the wife disturbs them. You know, when you work from home, nobody respects your work. You are home, can you help me with the trash, right? I'm in the middle of a project. Yeah, it's just a minute, right? So the second step is the going co-workings. Probably heard about co-workings. There are open offices. It's just offices. You know, we like to give these fancy names. It's just offices where you can rent a place and work and quiet, right? Without people disturbing you. And the next step is that what the hell am I doing here? Why don't I go for a week in Fuerteventura? Why don't I go for a month in centuries, right? These are people who have salaries. They can move. This is a very huge phenomenon, and there are already hotels who are getting this, right? This is just a, a co-working. A newer phenomenon is co-living. People travel all year, they work from you know, places, and then they get bored and they get lonely. So they're going to co-living where they can meet people. Co-living are hotels who are selling you company, basically, right? They say, come here, it's going to be cool people, they're going to be friends. Not everybody's front of the screen anyway, nothing changes. That's what they're selling, right? We have this. This hotel opened in Florence uh, a few months ago. I went to see it. Oh, Who is it? Student. Student. Of course. I went to see this place. It's a hotel. It's a hotel. It's all cool and fancy with automatic chicken, etc. But it's a hotel. And it has a co working downstairs. This is your business center. Now it's not for working, it's the same thing. It's just a different name, a bit larger and a bit cooler with puffy chairs, right? But it's, it's a business center. And then they have a kitchen. And the kitchen is the basement and it's like master chef kitchen, right? So you can cook. And the fridge has a specific space for you. It's open, it's like your own safe where you keep your, your food. So you can live there for a month. You can live in a room for a month and you can eat there. You don't have to go to the restaurant. So hotels always want to go to the restaurant. When you travel a month or two months in the road, you can't go to the restaurant every day, it's boring. Even if it was for free, people who work for travel, they know it. You go in this restaurant in the evening, you are alone, you're eating and you're looking at your phone. It's nothing said, more sad than this, right? So these places give you a different environment where you can live this kind of life. And this kind of life is becoming normal.
That's the last opportunity. This is a longer term opportunity, but it's probably the bigger. Do you remember when I don't know if TTG was here when there was no internet? It's probably full of tour operators and travel agencies who were getting their customers through their offices, right? And then somebody came on stage and said, We have this new thing, it's the internet. And nobody believed, right? I heard the internet as, you know, criminals and terrorists in there. And then the internet came, and now we are only talking, only talking about the internet. The blockchain is the next thing, blockchain is the next internet, right? So, today, today, there is a website, and this is called Blockchain. It's a 0% commission booking portal. You can book today an apartment in Milan, or Rome, or New York, and don't pay the sorry, a hotel trip. And don't pay the commission. It's beta, it's not ready, it's ugly, it's low. It doesn't accept euro, it doesn't accept dollars, only their, their tokens. In six months, it's gonna accept two dollars. Zero percent commission. Where do we make the money? From the token. It's a very long thing to explain, but basically the model could be sustainable. And then there are the central sorry, your opportunity here is to check these people out, see if you want to be in it. And you know what? Maybe your hotel is on there already. They have 300,000 hotels, they got them from some distributor. The hotel industry is very, I don't know it very well. I know that you can put your hotel, give your hotel to somebody, and then it goes around, right? So maybe your hotel is over there. The people from Jotto Park, they probably don't know there. Okay? And what they get is, is dollars, they get customers as from any other channel. Check it out. Decentralized OTAs, the opportunity here is for you as a group of hoteliers to sit down and say, why don't we do our own okie dokie? Why don't we build a decentralized OTA? Okay, I know what they're thinking, the okay, economy is too big. Big travel agencies were too big already, but then the internet came and booked the phone, killed them all, right? Tokenization, tokenization is like if you are part of this project, you get tokens. It's like shares in a way. You can pay also the hotel with the shares. So if this project is successful, you have a stake in it, right? I don't have time to go through much of this, but this is really, really exciting. It's actually the most exciting thing. That's what I was waiting for in these four years doing this beautiful job of distributing online apartments. And this thing is really, really interesting. And actually, you probably heard about Bitcoin, crypto, should we accept Bitcoin in my hotel? This is the least interesting part. Nobody has crypto. People have crypto just crying now because the price is low. And when the price goes up, they don't want to touch it because it's going up. So, you may accept crypto. It's something easy to do. It's not going to bring you many customers. But you can position yourself for when customers, everybody's going to have crypto. It's going to take 5, 10, 20 years. We don't know, right? But it's going to happen. So we are building a decentralized OTA in the vacation rental space. We are building an alternative to our We build a community and we are working on it. But you can do it too. The nice thing about that is open source software. You can take the same software we're using and do your own decentralized OTA. Again, it's too early. It's not too early to look into it because your competitive advantage is very strong. Imagine getting on the internet in 1995 and think, oh, maybe I can do a Booking.com thing. Because Booking.com well, doesn't exist. You have all the time in the world to do it. It's a bit late. People are doing it, but it's not too late. So check it out. One thing you can do is to ask for you know, consultancy to people into the space. So I have three ideas here. One is Vivo Turismo. This is from the Little Atlantic from Flores. is the biggest Italian, this is for Italians, biggest Italian training uh, company about that. The second one is Vacation Rental Tour Summit, is about, it's in English, so you may talk to this guy. The third one is me, it's more personalized, and you can ask me for an assistance. So the four opportunities again. Become a property manager, put your hotel in Airbnb, Look at the digital model of smart workers to change how your hotel is made completely and check out the blockchain. None of this may actually work for you. It's just, you know, things which are very important to check out. Then maybe you are a hotel where things are going to be the same for the next 20 years. There are still travel agencies out there. You know, when people still go in travel agencies. So check it out, okay? It's, it's, really, it's really interesting at least. 
So the next step I want to suggest to you is to talk to the property manager. There are property managers in your city and they're probably struggling with some things and you can work, talk to them and say, maybe we can do something together. Don't start it alone. There's a lot to learn in this, in this business. Go to a property manager and see, maybe we can work together. I can give you the infrastructure. Your hotel, if you are a hotelier, is a platform. It's no more a hotel. It's a whole platform for accommodation and you can use that. Then one idea is to book the next year vacation rental for summer. It's going to be in Spain or in uh, Portugal in October, November. And you can meet all the people in the space. Booking.com is there, Airbnb is there, HomeAway is there, and all the big guys, all the big, big names are there. So check it out, it's very nice. Uh, visit a co working in your city, get the feeling of these people, talk to these people. They are not, they're normal people. And there's more and more of that. And you may become a digital nomad who knows because they will not tell you why don't you work from home, right? And then check out if you are in Italy, go to see the student hotel in Florence. It's really, really interesting. That's it. Thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Luca.